Hi, it's Ms. Parrott, and this video is about the basics of aerobic cellular respiration. Aerobic cellular respiration is the process by which organisms take unusable chemical energy from food and combine it with oxygen to make usable energy to power cells processes called ATP. Now, where do the reactants come from? Well, glucose, uh, which is a sugar, a carbohydrate, comes uh, from our food. Its chemical formula is C6H12O6. So anytime we break down carbohydrates, at the end of the day, we're going to get the basic building block of carbs, glucose. Then we're going to take in oxygen, O2. We're going to inhale it from the air. Then in a series of many, many coupled reactions, at the end of the day, we're gonna yield carbon dioxide gas, CO2, and we're gonna breathe that out. So when, think about that, when you breathe out, that's actually a culmination of the CO2 that's coming out of every mitochondria in your whole body. And you're breathing it out, along with water, which, I mean, water vapor, also you breathe that out, some water, uh, you sweat out, some of it you cry out, some of it uh, you're excreting as urine, and some of it stays in your body and like your blood and in your cytoplasm. So here's a picture. Again, we're getting our reactants from our food and air, and then we're releasing our products uh, through our breath along with several other ways. Aerobic cellular respiration happens in the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells. The structure of the mitochondria is it has an outer membrane, an inner folded membrane, and then in between those two membranes is called the intermembrane space. Uh, that's because you need to have different uh, atoms and molecules going across this from uh, inside the inner membrane to that inner membrane space and back again over and over for all the reactions of aerobic cellular respiration to occur. Another thing you'll find in mitochondria is its own mitochondrial DNA. The fact that the mitochondria is a double membrane organelle with its own DNA is actually evidence for endosymbiotic theory. Endosymbiotic theory is the explanation that um, mitochondria used to be its own prokaryotic organism that then formed a symbiotic relationship with another prokaryotic organism. And that was one of the first steps to eukaryotic organisms coming to be. So everyone calls mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell which makes my eyes roll because sometimes we don't really know what that means. But what it actually means is the, what's happening in the mitochondria is we're taking energy that we can't use, glucose, from our food and transforming it through a series of many, many reactions into ATP, a form we can use. And these reactions are paired together. So coupled reactions generally, this is a very general definition, they are reactions where there's a transfer of energy from one side of a, rea of a reaction to the other. So you can see these two reactions. Um, so we've, in the one up here, I've got glucose plus oxygen yields CO2 and water. And then in a like a parallel reaction, I have ADP or adenosine diphosphate. So A is for adenosine and these P's are each phosphates. So adenosine diphosphate means this one has two plus one inorganic phosphate is going to yield. So when I stick this P onto these other two P's, it'll make ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So it's an adenosine plus three phosphates. So in this set of paired reactions, I've taken the energy from the reactant side of this 
and put the energy on the product side of this equation. Now again, these are net equations, meaning there's actually lots and lots of other reactions going on in between, but at the end of the day, this is what you start with and this is what you end with. So right, again, a coupled reaction is where an energy releasing reaction is powering an energy storing reaction. We're releasing reaction here, we're releasing energy here, and then storing energy as ATP here. Now, as we know, ATP does not hold energy very long and is used, like that energy is, that P is popped off and that energy is used in the cell somewhere to power a cell process almost immediately. Um, and then this happens again. So I was talking about, oh, dropping my marker. Okay, I was talking about the net chemical equation. And we've been looking at glucose plus oxygen yields CO2 and water. But you can probably look at this and easily tell that it's not a balanced chemical equation. So we're gonna take some time to do that right now. I encourage you to hit pause, use the skills you've learned in this class so far to try and balance the reaction yourself, then hit play to see if you were right. So I've already kind of kicked us off by listing the elements CH and O on each side and counting how many we start with. On the reactant side, we start with six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and in this combination, eight oxygen. On the product side, we've got one carbon, two hydrogens, and three oxygens. So let's look together. We can start off, if I have six carbons here, I could put a six in front of CO2. So now I have six carbons, not one, let's recount, and then my oxygens, six times two is 12, plus one instead of three, I now have 13. So my carbons are balanced, but my hydrogens and oxygens aren't. Okay, another easy fix. Let's put a six in front of the H in water. So now six times two is 12. My two has become a 12, and now my hydrogens are balanced. Mm, but my oxygens are still off. On this side, I have um, 12 and plus six is 18. And on this side, I only have eight. So what could I do? I could probably put something right here. Uh, if I put a six in front of this two, that makes six times two is 12, plus this six, 12 plus six is 18. And now I have a balanced chemical equation. Yes, you do need to know the balanced chemical equation for aerobic cellular respiration. Now, what's kind of great is for every one molecule of glucose, we're actually going to make 36 ATPs. So if this is an ATP, and I drew it so that you can see kind of the ingredients happening. So if I have 36 ATPs over here, and remember, the energy is being stored, it's being released here, and it's being stored in this bond between the last two phosphates. So if I have 36 ATPs, how many of ADP and phosphates do I need? Well, I'm gonna need 36 of each. 36 ADPs with two phosphates, and then I'm gonna need one extra phosphate to go on all 36 of those. So I'll need 36 here to make 36 ATP. So that is the, the basic general description of aerobic cellular respiration. I hope this helps.